All right, let's talk about something that gives pretty much everyone new to Proxmox a special kind of anxiety. We're going to clear up the confusion around how CPU cores actually work in a virtual machine, because trust me, it's not what you think. Let's just dive right in. It really all comes down to this one single question, doesn't it? You're staring at that VM creation screen, you're plugging in the numbers, you assign the RAM, you assign the storage, and then you get to the CPU cores and your brain just kind of short circuits. Are they the same? Do they behave the same way as everything else? And this, this right here perfectly captures that feeling. It's the little voice of panic in your head. You give two cores to your new home assistant VM, you click start, and this wave of dread washes over you. Oh no, have I just permanently imprisoned a piece of my expensive processor? Are they gone forever? But here's the thing I need you to hear. You are not alone in this feeling, at all. In fact, going through this exact existential crisis is basically a home lab rite of passage. Every single person who's ever set up their first hypervisor has been right where you are, sweating bullets over that CPU core count. So let's actually break down what's happening during this Proxmox panic attack. Because if we understand where the fear is coming from, it's a whole lot easier to get past it. Your thought process probably goes something like this, right? Okay, RAM, that feels permanent. You assign it and you know that chunk of memory is now dedicated, it's gone. Storage is even scarier. You know you can make a disk bigger, but shrinking it, that's a total nightmare. So your brain logically concludes that CPU cores must follow the same terrifying permanent rules. You think you're physically carving off a piece of silicon. And so, here is the answer you've been waiting for. No, absolutely 100% not. That is not how it works at all. You can take a deep breath. Your CPU is totally fine. Those cores are not trapped in a Pokeball. So to really get this, we just need a better way to think about it, a better analogy. We're not talking about prison sentences for your CPU cores. We're just talking about making reservations. Let's put it this way. Think of assigning RAM like renting an apartment. Once you give eight gigs of RAM to a VM, it's occupied. It's off the market. No one else can use it. But vCPUs? That's more like making a reservation at a busy restaurant. You're just telling Proxmox, hey, I'd like this VM to act like it has access to two chefs. You're booking their time. You're not locking the chefs in the kitchen forever. Now, the technical term for this whole process is CPU scheduling. But the main thing to remember is that the physical cores are not carved up and handed over. They are shared. Think of it like a big bowl of chips at a party. Everybody gets to grab some, and unless one VM is just absolutely hammering its CPU at 100%, there's always plenty of processing time left over for the other VMs to snack on. You know, this whole idea of sharing, it leads us to something that feels a little bit like a dark art, but it's actually totally normal in the world of virtualization. And that is the magic of over-provisioning. Over-provisioning just means assigning more total virtual CPUs across all your VMs than you physically have in your machine. I know, it sounds completely insane. It feels reckless, like you're writing checks your bank account can't cash. But here's the secret, it works because most of your VMs are just sitting around doing nothing most of the time they aren't all demanding 100% of the CPU at the exact same moment. And just to give you an idea of how far you can push this, we saw one user online just casually mention they have 60 total vCPUs assigned across their whole system, running on a machine with only 12 physical cores and 24 threats. And their total system load, a nice calm 24%. It's absolute chaos math, but it just works. So what if you get it wrong? What if you give a VM, say, eight cores, but then you realize it barely needs two? Well, unlike trying to shrink a virtual disk, which is terrifying, reducing CPU cores is super easy. You just change the number and reboot the VM. That's it. No cosmic punishment, no data loss. Proxmox just handles it. It's beautiful. Okay, so now that we know CPUs are a flexible, friendly resource, let's pivot and talk about the real villain in this story, the resource that you actually should be a little bit scared of. Yeah, it's RAM. RAM is the strict, no fun cousin at the resource family reunion. There's no friendly sharing going on here. When you run out of RAM, Proxmox doesn't just politely shuffle things around. Oh no, it brings out what's called the out of memory killer. It literally picks a VM that it thinks is the problem and just kills the process to free up memory. Game over. So if there's one comparison you really need to remember, it's this one. Over-provisioning your CPU is like a friendly game of musical chairs. Everyone gets a turn and all kind of works out. But over-provisioning your RAM? That is a very dangerous game of Russian roulette. You might get away with it for a bit, but sooner or later, your Plex server is just going to disappear right in the middle of a movie. 
Okay, so we've covered the theory, we've covered the panic, and we've covered the analogies. Now let's just put it all together into a super simple, actionable cheat sheet that you can use every single time you spin up a new VM. All right, here it is, your simple guide. First up, CPU cores. Just remember, they are flexible, they are shared. Go ahead and over-provision, be generous. You can always change it later with a simple reboot. Second, RAM. This is the one you gotta be careful with. Don't overcommit, or you're gonna risk VMs getting randomly killed. And finally, storage. Treat this one like a tattoo. Making it bigger is easy, but making it smaller is painful, so just try to plan ahead. So look, if you remember just one single thing from all this, let it be this phrase right here. CPU cores are not locked resources. They are pretend time slots. You are just giving a VM permission to request processing time. You are not handing over a physical piece of your computer. So go on, experiment. Give your home assistant VM those extra cores. Give Plex a little more breathing room. You can always dial it back later. Your home lab is not going to explode, I promise. Now you know how it really works.